Hello everyone, this is Nick Brokaw, the director, writer, producer of Four Winds, and thank you for joining me here to have a look at the deleted scenes and or shots that might not have made it into the final cut. Starting here with a uh, montage of five shots of a very uh, noble looking lizard here who joined us on our first morning at Paramount Ranch. Um, I think our camera department was kind of getting used to the 35 millimeter camera set up here and having a little bit of fun first thing in the morning. Um, and there goes that lizard. But not to be outdone by uh, this gigantic rattlesnake that decided to mosey on through our town. Paramount Ranch is a fully functional uh, movie ranch and has been sitting in the, uh, the hills of Malibu. Um, since the 1940s and we were very lucky to be in there um, shooting this thank you to the California State Park System um, and the authentic wildlife uh, certainly came with um, it's home to a lot of wildlife including that snake and lizard and a bunch of other deer and such um, now we're having a look at the town here this was uh, the beginning of um, our original ending where Four Winds enters the town to uh, confront our antagonist and I just love this shot um, of Jerry Wolf who plays Four Winds entering our town here. Uh, you'll see though in our final cut um, Four Winds enters the town from a completely different spot and actually the final confrontation um, happens right where Four Winds enters this scene in this sequence. Um, I just really love the composition of everything and Mario Contini, the cinematographer, strapped on the Steadicam rig and did some really nice work here. Um, I love the performance by Jerry and the way he looks as well, costume wise, makeup wise. Um, he's wearing this serape around him um, which belongs to old man, the old man character played by A. Martinez. In this ending, uh, the old man character did not reappear as he does in our uh, final cut. Um, so instead he bestows Four Winds with that serape that was part of his wardrobe. So that was a little element that made it into this cut and uh, did not make it into the final cut. Here we have Ken Lyle being confronted by Jerry here, and there's a whole long sequence that uh, ended up getting cut out. Um, Jerry gave a very emotional and impassioned speech, um, which ultimately ends in forgiveness. Um, here's some of the footage of that uh, encounter, and um, that kind of got reworded and improved greatly um, in the final cut. Four Winds being made in the mold of a spaghetti western, I was wanting to really uh, explore the possibilities of having a very honest and brutal ending where our main character is uh, executed by firing squad. Um, so even when he does come and confront our antagonist in this scene, um, I wanted to have him be prepared to die and know that he was going to be knocked out and... Um, taken to uh, be executed by firing squad um, and thus be released from his body and rejoined with his uh, his people in the next realm. Bringing the old man character back into the final scene certainly heightened the drama at such a crucial point in the film, um, as well as having Forwins deliver his emotional speech to Captain Fleming telepathically um, really added to the psycho-spiritual theme that runs throughout Four Winds. Introducing Fleming to the ghosts of his sins and helping the audience feel that more of a victory is achieved for Four Winds, even though he dies moments later. I think that the final ending that we uh, ended up rewriting and reshooting is much stronger, but uh, here you can see some of uh, the way that the original ending was going to be constructed. Uh, Four Winds was shot on 35mm. We shot on some amazing two perfs 35mm cameras that uh, were uh, made available to us by Kelvin Crumplin from Australia, who's our co-producer and mentor on this project. Um, but shooting 35mm is also a very fragile medium when it's not handled um, correctly. And 
you're seeing some of the results of uh, light leaks. The uh, discolorations that you're seeing um, are the results of just a tiny little bit of light that snuck its way past some tape on the side of the camera. I think with the Steadicam work, um, maybe jostling the uh, film magazine a little bit allowed just the slightest bit of light to come in and uh, unfortunately rendered a lot of this footage useless. Um, some of these shots do make it into the final cut and that's thanks to Matt Conrad, our uh, colorist, who was able to really salvage a lot of it. Um, but certain parts of it were not salvageable, but I wanted to include them here because they were some very nicely composed shots. Um, and you're also seeing some of the um, front ends and tail ends of shots. Um, the amazing people that came out to act in the film and the wonderful work of the art department dressing Paramount Ranch. Um, a lot of it got left on the cutting room floor and I really wanted to throw some of that into the uh, deleted scenes bit here so we can really see what a fantastic job they did um, outfitting everyone. Allison Adams did an amazing job providing uh, all the women's costumes that you're seeing here um, and some of the faces here of Oscar and George, um, Mikey and Zach um, that do not get featured prominently since they are uh, some of the townsfolk and a lot of these parts got cut out because the pace of the scene required um, you know the action to be cut a certain way and we were following our main character in but uh, I did want to you know, allow some time to see some of the uh, wonderful work and performances um, that uh, did not find its way into the final cut. Here we see some of our bar scene. Uh, we do see quite a bit of this in the final cut, but I wanted to really just, again, feature the amazing work of all the background actors and the set dressing. Um, here we see just the, the melee of people and activity in the uh, saloon here. It was wonderfully shot, wonderfully lit. It was a lot of fun being there. It was really a dream come true to be able to uh, step in and um, see this world that I had written on a page come to life and all these fantastic actors and friends who uh, came out. You can see uh, some of the Guns of the Round Table guys, Tucson and Justice and some of these guys who came, drove a long way to be in this film, brought their, their guns and their spurs and all the fun stuff. <clears throat> Yeah, Cougar George is our production designer and a good friend and really could not have uh, made Four Winds without all of his effort and time and uh, he just had this amazing red beard that I wanted to feature in the film as well. Um, he had a little cameo as our bartender as you can see here and um, the fire marshal was not too happy that we had lit his cigar there but I'm sure glad that we did it really adds to the authenticity. So we got a couple takes before the fire marshal shut us down there. Again, just seeing uh, some of this overcranked footage that was used um, to uh, show Four Winds in his delusional state and being overwhelmed by all this activity in the bar here, but I really just wanted to really show how wonderfully composed and badass it all looks um, once again here. And... Uh, a good friend of mine, Billy Musselman, um, who you will see on the right of frame, 
brought that little Derringer pistol. That's a real Derringer pistol that he had uh, had from the 1800s, and I just loved the fact that that little little bit adds a little bit more authenticity to this uh, bar scene here. There's another little segment that cut out as we were trying to shorten what ended up being a 34-minute film uh, to try to keep it under 40 minutes here. Shots like this got uh, chopped off, even though it's shot at uh, magic hour here. You can see the sun is going down, but only the very, very tail end of this shot got used in the final cut. Um, but the efforts that went into uh, putting this all together, I really just wanted to uh, throw into this segment. Here we see our original execution scene. Um, once again, there's a little cameo by Cougar, and then myself on the left there. Um, our original ending was going to be this epic slow motion execution scene. Um, been trying to get some reenactors to come out, some, some true Civil War reenactors who would come out and um, bring their black powder and their guns, and we were going to try to shoot them. Uh, or film them shooting at Four Winds for this execution scene. Uh, we ended up only filming the part of the actual blood burst um, and Four Winds' body escaping and running off. So you're just seeing some of the footage here that uh, never made it in. But on our on our tech scout, we went and found our uh, location out in the Victorville Desert um, and found this gorgeous, massive Joshua tree that. Uh, was leaning at this angle and I just thought it would be a really great spot for uh, this execution scene. Here you're seeing Jeff Scott, our armorer, who was out there to um, maintain the safety and you know bring his uh, um, squib rigging gear out there um, and I really applaud and praise Jerry Wolf for uh, trusting myself and trusting Mr. Scott there to uh, rig him up with these uh, minor explosives that you'll see here soon bursting out of his sh shirt. Once again, this scene did not make it into the film, but uh, I wanted to include this as a little fun bit of information um, about our original ending here. We're going to shoot at a later date the shots actually being fired and close-ups of the muskets being loaded and the faces of the men aiming and even have uh, the Captain Fleming character be the one yelling the order um, to fire. Here you're seeing a lot of the uh, footage that we were going to end up using as a VFX plate and overlapping so the mortal body of Four Winds staying up against the tree and dying, and then a translucent Four Winds soul running off. And here you see Four Winds escaping his body, and off into the sunset we go. Thanks again for listening in, and I hope you have enjoyed.